It's been a long week, right? Are you ready to wind down? Why not? It's time for the Wine Time Fridays podcast with Shelly and Phil. Neither are sommeliers, but both have a deep passion for life, each other, and of course, delicious wine. And now, here to talk about this week over a glass of wine is Shelly and Phil. It's wine time. Hello and welcome to another delicious episode of the Wine Time Fridays podcast with Shelly and Phil. This week, we're raising a glass to International Riesling Day, so grab a bottle of uh, canvas back Riesling that we got from Studio One, 107. Get ready to sip, savor, and celebrate with us from sweet to dry and everything in between. We're exploring the world of this versatile grape. So sit back, pour yourself a glass, and let's dive into the wonderful world of Riesling. Happy Friday, Shelly. It's episode 151 on this March 10th. It's wine time. Yay. <laughs> You have no idea how much yay. Um, let's get right into it. So, <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> oh, it's wine time. I have to get that. That would be pretty good. Happy Friday. It's <laughs> wine time. I didn't hear it. It's not doing it. Go ahead. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, anyway, we've got a lot to get through. Um, I've already opened our wine. Um, it is a, because this is actually part two of our um, wine clubs series. And today we're going to talk about Studio 107, um, all about mm -hmm. that. Even though Bottle Joy is a sponsor, we're going to show the love on this uh, episode. So this is... So you've already opened yours. I've already poured mine. <laughs> The Canvas Back Riesling 2020 from Royal Slope. Yeah, let me go ahead. Oh, gosh, this is a little effervescent, Shelly. Does it seem a little I didn't effervescent? notice that. Oh, I'm so excited to try this. <laughs> to health, wealth, and abundance, gratitude, romance, and peace on earth. That's good. It's really it's delicious. Good. It really is very good. You know, this may be a record for Wine Time Fridays, uh, getting into that first wine. I mean, oh, you mean how fast we did that? How fast we did that? Yeah. Um, so it's been a week. <laughs> it's been a week. Busy, busy week. Very much so, and it's going to be uh, even busier next one uh, next week. Uh, mm -hmm. So this particular wine we got from Studio One Hundred Seven. Um, they have their wine club is called Club 107, and to use their word, Shelley, it brings you exciting and exclusive wines from sellers around the world. Personalize your membership by choosing wines from three different categories in red or white, and learn about each wine with tasting notes from the winery and enjoy them with our delicious small plates menu and food pairing suggestions. That's if you're going to have it there. Um, Which is always fun. Yeah, it is always. But fun. actually, then you just want to buy another bottle of the same thing to take. You know, home. we happen to have friends that do just that, don't they? Don't we? We do. Uh, so what's really kind of cool too is uh, you'll receive discounts on the wine and jewelry at Studio One Hundred and Seven when you are a uh, a God, Club One Hundred and Seven member. Um, I am no, I have not been quiet about this at all, uh, Tom who curates the wines and buys the wines for their, uh, for studio 107. I, I love his palate. Um, it's, it's much like yours then. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, isn't it kind of like yours too? I, it's not like you're like, Oh yeah, you love them. I hate them. I mean, no, I'm not like that. I like yeah, them too. Yeah. They, they have been really, really good wines. Uh, this one has a price point of $30, which, you know, it's a white wine. It's, uh, it's a little, little spendy maybe for a white wine, but my goodness, the quality on this is really outstanding. This would go. You want a good well. Riesling, though. What's that? You want a good Riesling. Yeah. yeah. You want to pay that much. Um, we have some tasting notes on this. So this is, is actually from Duckhorn, right? It's the Duckhorn portfolio, yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Duckhorn portfolio, portfolio. Uh, they have decoy, they have Calera, they have canvas back. Um, yep. migration. Duckhorn. <laughs> and Duckhorn, <laughs> right? Uh, Paradox and a go a go Golden Golden Eye. I think it's what it is. Anyway, they have a, you know they have a really strong portfolio. It's not huge, but it is it's high quality. And honestly, to me, I had never heard about Canvas back uh, until about I don't know six to eight months ago. And uh, their wines are fantastic. I would tell you the alcohol on this, but it's covered up by a sticker that you put on there. <laughs> Well, I, you know what? I think this is 13%, but if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, and this is a Walla Walla wine. It's not a California wine. 11. Or, you know. wine. No, it is from Walla Walla. By the way, we are in the middle, Shelly, of the month of March, almost the middle. And it is what we love to say, Drink Washington State Wine Month. We might as well talk about another uh, sponsor, which is Eternal, which their second label is Drink Washington State. Yeah, exactly. Um, they have a whole month for themselves. I know, and we already mm -hmm. did uh, an Eternal wine uh, as part uh, the part one of the wine club. So we have to. This is going to be eight, maybe even nine, if we can sneak Revora back in, uh, because now that the well, we just did <laughs> cat is out of the bag. Uh, Last week we had Lane Hewitt uh, from Aurora, but the week before that we had announced that they are in fact a new sponsor and we have another announcement. We're not gonna announce that yet though. We're gonna tease it, super tease. But we have another winery that is on board at Wine Time Fridays. But yeah, this month is uh, two different things. One is Drink Washington State Wine Month and the other is- International. Women's Day. Women's Day. Uh, Women's Day, International Women's Day is during this month. And then um, Women's Month, Women's History Women, Month. Women's History Month, yeah. Mm -hmm. The whole month. Um, which kind of teases next week a little bit. Yeah. We've got the great fortune, as long as all the moons align and everything you know, lines up just right, we are going to have a woman-owned uh, winery, a winery. We're going to have new, brand new, just released. I mean, just wine. released. Yeah. A and, very cool label. Yep. And and kind of a cool story, too. Uh, we, I, I, I think this is going to happen, so we're going to semi-tease it, but next week should be kind of fun. Plus, we're going to be doing it from San Diego from Social Media Marketing World. Where we hope it's gonna be warm. <laughs> but there's, it may not be. Who knows? Hey, we should take a quick break and when we come back, we're gonna dive into that red wine that uh, is also from Studio 107 and kind of excited about that as well. So when we get back, we'll go into that. Hello and welcome back to Wine Time Fridays on this March 10th, 2023. Uh, it's hard to believe we're already in March. I think I say that every episode, but it's just, yeah, the, the year is flying by. Uh, episode 151, we are on the downside heading to, towards 200 now. What are we going to do for 200? I was actually thinking about that today. So mm -hmm. I had mentioned to you, I don't know maybe a couple episodes ago about what we're going to do for 200. Should we do, should we make it Cristal as the, and you're like, I don't know. We can do Cristal Rosé. <laughs> we could do that. Um, but what popped in my mind was don't carry on, uh, which, you know, I don't know. That just popped into my mind. Or Opus. Opus. That would be, well, we have 49 weeks to think about that. Yeah, we do. It's almost a year. That's right. Almost a year. Wow. Yeah. Next February, uh, we will be celebrating episode 200. Time out. You guys mellow out. No. Go lie down. Time in. 
So that will be a lot Wait. of fun. Trying um, to find the alcohol on this. Uh, uh, on the red? 14.1. Okay. Time in. 11.9 on that Riesling, though. That's really that's really good. 11.9 on the Riesling. I like that. I, yeah, like, I, like, I like lower alcohol wines, I have to say. So this is a $35 bottle of wine from our friends at Studio 107. Uh, Shelly, should we go ahead and take this opportunity? Have you poured this already too? Yeah. Magic, it's magic. It is magic. Okay, so this is the uh, 20, what, what's the year on this? 20, 19. 2019. Wait, hold that there for a second. Yeah. Okay. Shelly, you gotta take a picture. <laughs> 2019 Rutherford Road Wine Cellars Cabernet Sauvignon from a little place in California very few people know about. Very few people. Napa Valley, I think it's called. Valley. Napa <laughs> Valley. Napa Valley. Napa Valley. There's uh, a there's a like there's like three Rutherfords, right? And yeah, there's a few of them. Rutherford that. Road, Rutherford Hills, Rutherford Winery. Yeah, there's a, there's a few, that's for sure. Uh, hashtag, hashtag cheersing. Oh my gosh, okay. Cheers. And this is very drinkable right now. Only four years old. The very first time it hit my tongue, I was like, uh oh. And that was just fleeting. And then it washed over my tongue, and it's really quite delicious. Very delicious. But what was the uh oh about? Uh, it just seemed, um, it didn't. Titanic. Tannicky? No, it wasn't tannicky. It was yeah. kind of funky. Um, mm, I didn't get that. But that was like right at the very, very beginning. <laughs> this is pretty good. Um, so that Riesling was 100% Riesling. This is not 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. This is 97.5% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and 2.5% Merlot. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> how did you know that? I, I don't know. I just did. I don't know how I know things, but. Next time you're going to have to say that before I tell you. Probably. I, I was almost going to say it. Is that right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> this has got 22 months in French oak. And uh, do you have, uh, we didn't really talk about the food pairings for that Riesling, but do you have, I mean, it's pretty obvious what you do with this. Um, they they red say, meats. Mm -hmm. what's that? Red meats, pasta with red sauces. This, like this um, um, there's some some cheeses. Really detailed. Enjoy this showstopper with pan seared filet served with roasted fingerling potatoes and crispy garlicky Brussels sprouts. That actually sounds fantastic. It does. Have not eaten. We have not eaten <laughs> soon. So that Riesling, I, I, I think, would be fantastic. With, um, this would, that Riesling would be super, super with uh, Thanksgiving turkey, in my opinion. It would be fantastic. And Chinese food. Oh, um, Chinese food. Seafood. It's what, what kind of food? Seafood. Oh, seafood. Yeah. Anytime I see food, I try to eat it. Sorry. It's not. A, it's not a sweet reasoning. It's along the drier side, which it's really nice. It's not. It's not a sweet wine. And did we say it was eleven point nine percent alcohol? I think we did. Wine and gave the Riesling a 90, and James Suckling gave it a 90. Let's see if I've got any scores for this. Uh, That's like an A. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you know, 
I think I I don't get the scoring. We're you know we've talked about doing an episode on wine scores. I think sometimes they're bought, but who knows? Uh, know about that? Yeah, I mean it's just the weird world. Uh, residual sugar on that Riesling is 067 percent residual sugar, so less than one percent, not zero percent. So there's a very tinge of sweetness to it, but man. That's an acidity. I shouldn't go back to a white, but I did. I only took yeah. a little bit to the red. So. I'll do that too. Um, <laughs> did you get, it was it super sweet then? It's not super sweet, no. It's got some nice acid to balance that. So it's good. Uh, both of these are fantastic. Little, maybe it's slightly, slightly, slightly effervescent. I don't have any bubbles or anything, but just. No, on just the have tail. that. Yeah. Um, one more quick break, and when we come back, we're going to start talking about some other things. We're going to start talking about what we've got in the future, what we've um, had in the past, and we're going to wrap this thing up. Welcome back to Wine Time Fridays, episode 151. Man, we're just blazing right through this today. Uh, Are we, We're talking about what we had in the future? No, no, we're going to talk about some things coming up in the future, some things that we've had in the past. Okay. That makes sense. That makes so, better sense than what you said a while ago. Yeah, you know, I, I'll tell you, I just get so giddy when we get to um, have wine together. Uh, so we've got um, International Riesling Day is Monday. That's why we're having this Riesling, okay? And that's the 13th, which happens to be my dad's birthday, Shelley. Uh, he would have been 83 years old this Monday. So I want to toast mm -hmm. him. Can we toast my dad? Yes. Does he like red wine or white wine? <laughs> uh, he liked box wine. My dad liked the inexpensive wine, and he thought this is just as good as the other. Um, I just had to say, we'll just have to agree to disagree. <laughs> so happy 83rd. That was him in heaven. <laughs> what was it, him in heaven? That clang. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he's probably shining down. Should be drinking boxed wine. Sorry, Dad. Mm -hmm. We'll do a boxed white wine episode, but we have already know that boxed red is not there. Um, tomorrow, I don't think we're going to do a boxed wine episode. Oh, a boxed white? Boxed wine. I don't know that we'll do no, that. Well, we did canned. We did canned Chardonnays. Yeah, we went into a can red, but we only have I one mean, can. To buy all of those boxed wines to taste through them. That's we'll be true. stuck with wine for years unless we buy some more vinegar pots. Yeah, maybe that might be the, the case. Hey, tomorrow, Shelly, we're going to go to a Robert Craig Cuvée Collective tasting in San Francisco. Yep. That is exciting. And before that, I think we might try to. Uh, in fact, we're gonna put. I'm gonna put this out there. Just so pop over to Napa Valley. <laughs> well, I, I brought that up. Yeah. We could do that, but I think we should do a Facebook Live, if not only at the tasting, both at one place where we go to taste wine, wherever that might be, and mm -hmm. at the tasting. I think we should do a little. So pay attention to our uh, Facebook page, because now that I've mentioned it, we have to do it. Yeah, I guess we do. I mean, it'll be fun, I think. It'll be, it'll be real fun. We'll have to bring those little thumbs, though, to put the camera in again. <laughs> uh, we have other things also to mention. Um, oh, Ladies Night at Bottle Joy, April 6th. That should be kind of fun. Oh, um, well, it should be fun. Monday, we're going to... I know some divas who would go with me. <laughs> I think... Okay. I, I highly recommend like, that. Like Kay and Carolyn and... Yes. Even Jean. What, really? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's mixing two groups together, boy. That's. We're not going to mix anything up. Uh, Monday, we're going to be at Social Media Marketing World for three days. So. Um, well, actually, we're going to be there Sunday. Yeah. For, for our training. For training, yeah. Um, and then, yes, Monday, we will be there. Last minute thing I added in my notes, you don't have them, but. Um, I sent Shelly a huge, I said, this would be good 
um, oh. next time reading. Uh, a chat GPT, uh, a, a video of a guy that put into chat GPT something about the three or give me the best uh, wines that I can buy at a supermarket or something like that. The best supermarket wines. Yeah. And so uh, there's two of them, and one of them is tasting them blind. And it's pretty interesting. One was a, um, a Oyster Bay uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, one was a Columbia Crest Cabernet. Cabernet. Cabernet? Yeah, Cabernet. And then there is a Segacio um, Zinfandel. But, you know, these are not bad wines, uh, mm -hmm. but it's interesting that, you know, we've been talking a little bit about ChatGPT from, from time to time. Uh, I guess I could probably say that introduction that I did today was not 100% human content. Hello. That's where you got those funny words. <laughs> it was kind of fun. Um, this uh, Riesling, Shelley goes really getting better well. and better what's that getting better and better the Riesling? No, no i was gonna say yes. it goes really well with our uh naked wines wine word of the week which is petrol petrol you get some petrol in this not a lot a lot i don't get no. a lot but uh rieslings from a uh, germany or uh, european rieslings really mm -hmm. do have that petrol um, there's, a little bit. there's a hint in this. And is this made in the German style? Probably if it came from um, Duckhorn, it would. Yep. Be. Yep. So uh, petrol is a characteristic that certain Rieslings have. Um, a potent, distinctive aroma that some wine drinkers love and others do not. I mean, you think about it. This wine's got a little bit of gasoline, right? That's basically what it's saying. Um, so it doesn't taste, I mean, it doesn't taste, doesn't it smell like the gasoline right. when you're at a gas station and you right. open the tank? It doesn't smell like that. It smells more like the gasoline. If you ever had an, a lantern with the light that you turn on, it a smells like lantern. Yeah, it smells like that. Yeah. It, it's a, a light fragrance of that. Yep. I mean, some people don't even know what that is, though. But anyway, if, you, if you're I'm old like us. I'm kind of surprised you know what that is. Yeah, well. Your yeah. idea of camping was a, when a, somebody doesn't leave a chocolate on the pillow. I don't leave a mint on the pillow. But remember, I was born in Canada, and we had a cabin with no electricity, outhouses, and a lot of those lanterns. And a lot of those lanterns. Um, mm -hmm. there, uh, the petrol of... of Profile, if you will, is caused by TDN. Uh, do you want to pronounce that, Shelly? Maybe not. Yeah. Look up TDN. It's something like trimethyl uh, Trimethyl dihydronate. Nope. I'm not going to do it. No. Nope. I, should, I should know all those scientific terms because ex nurse and all, but I took two years. Of chemistry in well no actually I took four years of chemistry I barely got through them <laughs> oh chemistry man yeah that's tough stuff uh so thank you for the naked wines wine word of the week uh, we're here to try to educate we're gonna uh, wrap I know it's trimethyl hydronaphthalene there you go mm -hmm. you did it you did it uh, oh cheers well done you're not going to do it? Yes. I'm doing it. All right. Time to put a bow on this uh, episode by talking about some of the wines we enjoyed this week. Um, I think we should kind of alternate back and forth. So uh, Townsend Cellars Red Table Wine. Mm -hmm. We have that. We used to have that quite often. We haven't had yeah. it for a while. It's been a while. That's yep. a... Um, a Winery that's in Spokane area. Yep, yep. Winery. And and it's actually very cute. They have a red table on the label, and it's yeah, red. and they have a white table wine too. Do. It's a little table. sweeter, I think, and uh, don't really resonate with that as well. But that red table wine was actually really good. It I, it kind of I forgot how uh, reasonable that is. Um, 
You, of course, J-Lower. Of course. You should do the next one or Pop two. Popcorn Chardonnay. That's good. Yeah? Yes. You know what? I didn't try it, but it seemed like you could have written on that label. Like it had that kind of a texture. Really? I'm not sure, but it seemed like it did. Try that. Which is cute. We had La Playa Carmenere. Oh, that reminds me. I got to order some more. I haven't nice. done that. Order some more. I'm sorry yeah. about that. And this one, Zinopolis Zinfandel, which was really good for the price point. It was from Fred Meyer. And I think it was like $13 maybe and a very pretty label, <laughs> but it no. really was a, a good Zinfandel. Uh, what else? <laughs> Le Vieille Ferme Rosé. We've had that before. We've talked about it. The Miraval Cote de Provence Rosé. Yeah. And then what is really interesting, Dry Farm Wines, Grand um, um, Amour, and Pacific Redwoods Organic Merlot, two different uh, organic wines. One is a dry farm wine, which we'd done before, actually did a, um, a... Not that very one. Not that very one, but the dry farms... Um, We've had some dry farms wines, yeah. yes. They, they make them by dry farming, so they're less water. Yep, um, yep. Usually less alcohol, usually non, like they don't add sulfites and things like that. A lot of people um, I have talked to say they don't get the headaches from dry farms and organic wines. Now, that I, wasn't yeah. the case for me. You got a headache, right? I did. And uh, so uh, I don't know if there are different variables, um, wind, constant wind. Maybe. Maybe it's the wind. Uh, which could have had something to do with it. Um, anyway, so that was kind of cool. And then um, coming up in the future, we have Tanat Day, which is April 14th. International Malbec Day, which is April 17th. I don't know if we'll have a Tanat this year. We'll see. I don't think so, though. World Marcelon Day, uh, April 27th. And International Viognier Day. Viognier. Not that engineer. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go back to last week, which, by the way, if you didn't listen all the way to the end, you missed the wine sneeze. So go back and listen to last week's episode. The what? Past all of the uh, outro and all of that stuff. There was an Easter egg last week with our friend Lane Hewitt, and we talked about the wine sneezes. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's on, on the very, very tail end. Um, I can't remember if we mentioned the mispronunciation of Viognier. I think I may have put that in there. Well, he was the one talking about it, but I don't think we had that on recording, unfortunately. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's why we... So for those who don't know, Viognier is a hard wine to pronounce, and it's V-I-O. G N I E R Viognier, and people pronounce it all different ways, like Bognier and all sorts of things. But one time, somebody came in and asked for that Vagineer wine. <laughs> so that lives on. There are no names attached to that, so we're okay. But yeah, <laughs> Vagineer wines. The the thing is, Viognier, I can say, Muvedra, I have a problem with, and um, uh, Carignan. I'm, I'm getting better on Carignan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, Viognier Day uh, is the 28th of April. And here we go. Next week, Brianna Shelko with Marble Wines from Social Media Marketing World. I am 96.3% sure we're going to nail this. We're going to be able to talk with her. I hope so. Yes. Yeah. So I. Um, I said, yeah, that's so exciting. exciting. Yeah, it'll be fun. And um, so I think she only has the one wine. And so... No, I mean, there are, I believe there are two wines, and I believe the red blend was just introduced, but I could be wrong. I know yeah. I've seen another wine on their Instagram, but it, okay. it may, not, well, maybe, may not have been theirs. Uh, regardless, I think we Check might... out on Instagram, at Marble Wines. And there you go. You'll know more than me. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but uh, we'll, we'll and Brianna, try. Well, I guess we shouldn't say that. I was going to say what Brianna does, but 
and what oh, we'll talk all about that on the yeah, episode. yeah she's a big time pop singer and she's making wine so that's very fun um uh that will be on st patrick's day so we hope to slide in a wine that would go well for St. Patrick's Day. It won't be green wine. We're not in it. No, they don't have any green wines, do No, they? we're not. No, that's pathetic. Ugh. Uh, I'll bring yeah. some food coloring. No, that's disgusting. Uh, big thank you today's to today's sponsors, Bottle Joy and Elson Sellers. Thank you guys for um, supporting our podcast and producing really good, well, Bottle Joy sells really good wine and Elson Sellers produces really good wine. We are constantly trying to get Elsom and Eternal into the North Idaho market. Uh, I've got Marla from Coeur d'Alene Fresh that said, hook us up, Phil. Come on. I'm like, let's uh, talk with um, our friends at Eternal Wine and let's, you know, Brad Benko, come on. Let's get you guys into our market. So anyway, Shelly, this has been awesome. And with a little bit of, just a little bit of knowledge, wine becomes a lot less overwhelming. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week. We'll be in San Diego with Brianna and Marble Wines and have an awesome weekend. Drink some Riesling. Go down and ask Tom about this canvas back. Yeah, for a Riesling day on Monday. And this Rutherford Road Cabernet Sauvignon. And until next week, have an awesome weekend. Thank you for spending part of your day to wind down with Shelly and Phil. Remember, you can listen to any episode of the Wine Time Fridays podcast by visiting winetimefridays.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And join us on our Wine Time Fridays Facebook page, Instagram, or on Twitter, which is at Vintage Tweets, for daily conversation. Until next week, here's our toast to you. To health, wealth, abundance, gratitude, peace on earth, and of course, romance.